Hello YouTube, this is Lawson, Neosentience One. I'm here with Hida and Pooh. And uh, it's Halloween. Um, I'll tell you my story later, but I wound up at this uh, church function and I heard these guys performing. It's really great. But uh, just wanted to know more about you guys and your ministry and you know what brought you to Christ and why you do what you do. Right. Uh, I do I do a gospel rap. Like I said, I don't like to label it. I got uh, it's just basically what I believe in. Is you know e any rapper, any rapper. Once he gets on the microphone, he starts spitting what's on his heart. You know, and since I got God in my heart, and that's what He's been working in me, that's what comes out. Um, uh, I was with the, I was with a record label that released my album Ignite the Fire through Walmart.com, BestBuy.com, and uh, we've been on many compilations. And uh, the reason I do what I do is because I feel that uh, music has a really big stronghold on the young generation these days a lot of artists out there they talking about the sex the drugs the money and a lot of these younger generation they're, they're trying to follow in those footsteps and think that the money and the drugs and all that's going to make everything better but what i feel is if we can give them a positive message uh, a message about about christ a message about the love the, the love that god gives us that that never goes anywhere that's always there no matter what we go through um i feel if at least one person gets saved at our show i feel it was all worth it Um, with me personally, um, I grew up in church. My dad always raised us in church, but I consider myself um, in my younger days what was considered. I consider myself a quiet Christian um, because I was always at church on the days I was supposed to be at church. But on the days that I was at school or not at church with my friends, I didn't spread the gospel. I, I guess you could say I was ashamed to spread the gospel. I was scared to talk to them about Christ, um, wanting to fit in, wanting to be with them. But on the other hand, I got tired of, of burying friends. I got tired of friends committing suicide, overdosing on drugs, getting killed to gang violence. Um, but I have a specific uh, story that testimony stands out in my life. It's a friend of mine was at a party, and he, they did a drive-by shooting. And one of the bullets hit him in the back, and it paralyzed him for, for the rest of his life. Um, I went on to graduate school, and I didn't, I didn't get to see him for quite a while. But... Um, I ran into him later, years later, after he went back to school and graduated. I ran into him at the mall. When I saw him, I, this was my my relationship with Christ had already started growing. And when I saw him, I said, "Man, you know what? This is my opportunity to minister to this guy." I walk up to this guy. And he was up to me in the wheelchair, and he says, "Are you saved?" And I say, "Yeah." He goes, "Oh, cool. You know, then I don't have to worry about going through the whole stretch. You know, you're going to church." We started fellowshipping, but. At the end of the night, at the end of the conversation, he looked at me. He goes, "How long have you been saved?" And I said, "Man, I grew up in church." And he said, "You mean the the night I, we were at that party and and all this stuff happened to put me in this chair? You already knew about Christ. You were already going to church." I said, "Yeah, man, but I was ashamed to share it with you. I was I was you know I was scared of what y'all would think about me." And that night, the 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 thing that changed my life forever even though I had already started my, my relationship and my walk, and not because my dad wanted me going, but because it's something that I committed to. He looked at me and he said, maybe if you would have shared Christ with me and invited me to church, I would have been at church and not at that party, and I wouldn't be in this chair. And that night forever, that night, you know, he was a young guy that at the age of 16, he was, he was really deep in the game, making a lot of money, had all the girls, and that night, I knew he was a changed guy because when I asked him, I said, what do you plan to do with the rest of your life? He said, before I die, I'm going to win as many souls for Christ as I can. And when he said that, all I could do was tear up and tell him I was sorry. Because literally all the excuses I had ever made in life, I didn't have an excuse that day. So that day went on. Uh, a couple months went on. We started going to Bible study together. He would got to meet him. And uh, one night I got a call late at night and they said, hey, just going to let you know that he's passed away. And uh, he called Hida. Hida went with me to the funeral and figured, you know, it would be a good time to, to share the gospel and, and minister to the other people that were going to be there. But the funny thing is that everybody there, and there was a lot of, lot of young people, old people, whatever ages, they were there. And one thing that they all had in common is that my, my friend Mark, he shared the gospel with all of them before he passed away. So the day that he dropped that torch, I picked it up and I said, God, you know what? You put a mission in his heart. And because I failed to, to bridge that gap that he was looking for and somebody else came in and, and won him for you, I'm going to carry that torch for him. And before I die, I'm going to win as many souls for Christ as I can.
and that's how it all got started. Yeah, um, I, like I said, I grew up uh, in, in in a neighborhood that was pretty crazy, Pleasant Grove, uh, Dallas, Texas. You know what I'm saying, Southeast Dallas. Um, I, I grew up in an area where drugs and gangs was just a normal thing, so I just it, I I liked it. It was a normal part of life for me, um, and so you know the end the end of that road is easily easy is either prison or or death, and I accepted that. I embraced that lie, and. Uh, after spending one night in time in prayer with, with Satan, I told Satan, hey, use me. Here I am, you know, uh, thinking something mystical and magical was going to happen. It, nothing happened. I got up off my knees. Things were the, exactly the same. Um, but like I said, little did I know, you know, through junior high and high school and even after that, I began to influence people to go down the wrong road to make decisions that eventually tore up their lives. And uh, one day I was listening to some music and God said, I want you to rap for me. I want you to rap for me. And there was a Christian rap CD that I had. I would never buy the stuff. I wouldn't buy it. Someone gave it to me. It was a nice, clean, you know, nice, clean CD. Uh, put it in. You know, the Bible says that the word is like a double-edged sword. It cuts coming in. It cuts coming out. And the words that the brother was speaking were penetrating my soul. And God said, that's what I want you to do. I want you to, I'm going to use you to, to, to rap for my glory. I said, God, why do you want to use me? He said, because, you know, he says, this guy, I told him, I told God, this guy is doing a good job. What do you need me to do this for? I want to do it. He says, you know, he says, there's people that are going to uh, enter my kingdom and miss hell because you're obedient, not because he was. And that was some real talk that hit my heart, penetrated my soul. I said, okay. I said, all right. But, you know, you you provide everything. I had things lined up ready for me to roll that I think I worked hard for. I said, okay, you provide everything, cause I wanted to work with them. I told, I told the uh, guy who was mentoring me. I said, hey, what do I do? What do I do? He said, I can't go to the clubs and just rap and get out. He's like, no. He says, we're trying to build you up. He says, it's so easy to tear something down, and you, we're trying to build you up right now. So I said, God, you provide the way. Then I just seek this faith. I seek this faith. Uh, stayed up in prayer, and before you know it, I got a phone call from a record label. Who said they wanted? They were looking for artists. And I, we met up, and I, I was with them for five, six years. And uh, and you know, I released the album. Like I said, my first album was released nationwide, Walmart.com, Best Buy.com, and I'm currently working on a second uh, album. And God has been good. That's why I do it. So you're actually signed right now. No, I'm not signed. Uh, I w when it was time to renew contracts, I did not sign it. So I'm independent right now, but still trying to push an album out. Uh, distribution. I'm, 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 you know, in the process of picking up some artists under my wing and seeing how far God will take that, if any, if anywhere. You know. Where can people actually get a hold of your music? I have some copies you can get at Walmart.com. I mean, yeah, there's Walmart.com, Best Buy.com. Anywhere CDs are sold online nationwide, you can pick it up at. Uh, you can go to my MySpace, uh, MySpace forward slash The Heater, T-H-A-H-E-A-T-A. -A. You can pick up some copies there. I got them if you don't want to go through the Walmart thing or whatever. But uh, you can get that. And Pooh has a single out, too. You can hit up on his MySpace. What's your MySpace? It's uh, MySpace.com forward slash Valdez Pooh. All right, and uh, do you guys have any words for uh, anybody who doesn't believe in Christ or having uh, struggles trying to, I don't know, I guess believe or, you know, kind of sort it out from the rest of everything that's out there? Yeah, um, yeah basically what I, what I would want to tell you is that there's a lot of things out there in the world that you can try that, to bring you the satisfaction or, or, or the to fill a void that's there. But... I can tell you from experience that, that the only way you're going to fill that void, the only way you're going to get that satisfaction is through Jesus Christ. Because everything else, well, no matter what you're going through, if you turn to drugs, after you get off that high, those problems are still going to be there. If you turn to alcohol, when you come off that buzz, it's still going to be there. But no matter what, I can guarantee you that if you try Jesus Christ and give him a chance in your life, he will always provide, he will always care for you, and he will always love you. You know what? Us as humans, we can do each other wrong. We can we can turn on each other. We can stab each other in the back. But I'm here to let you know that Jesus Christ will never turn his back on you. He will always have your back, and he will always be there for you, no matter where you're at or what you're going through. And that's what I'm, that's why me and Heater are standing here today. We're prime examples that, that God never left our side. We always knew that, that there was a calling on our life. We stepped away from it. We went and did our thing. We tried doing our own thing. We realized, you know what, this ain't working for us. We gave God a chance, and he's brought us this far.